Hey everyone, Metagross Freak here with another What's Up With video where in this series we look at each manufacturer in Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel, looking at both a little bit of the lore behind their company as well as the unique, legendary, and higher rarity weapons from all three games. In today's episode we look at Torg, the arguably most manly man of all the manufacturers. Uh, Torg is led by Mr. Torg High Five Flexington and basically manly man, if there ever was one, who's basically kind of a combination of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage, who's also bisexual. Uh, Torg in Borderlands 1 basically were just categorized for having high damage, as well as coming classically in black, gray, or gunmetal, looking basically like they were very industrial. In Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel, these Torg weapons, unfortunately, can not have a, uh, unfortunately, not have a element, but they always come in explosive, firing gyro jets. Uh, gyro jets are essentially uh, slower than uh, slower than regular bullets. They move slower. However, they are always explosive, meaning basically, no matter what gun you're using, it always does splash damage of explosion. Um, in Borderlands the pre-sequel, this is really good because it basically does, I think it's either three or, or four times damage against enemies that are frozen. In Borderlands 2, it's pretty good. Not amazing, but reliable. Starting off, look, we're looking at the Bastard Machine Gun. Um, compared to most Torgs, it has even higher damage and high magazine size, but low accuracy and very high recoil. Next up is the Violator Repeater Pistol, which fires three round bursts with three bullets each. If you're familiar with how dolls work in Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel, essentially this is a doll weapon. Next up is the Friendly Fire, which is a incendiary shotgun that fires a smiley pattern. If you're familiar with the, uh, if you're familiar with the, uh, the kitten, or the Jolly Roger uh, shotgun and assault rifle from Borderlands 2, you kind of have an idea of how this works. Next up, the Cobra. The Cobra is a Torg sniper rifle that has uh, explosive times 3 or times 4 without damage reduction and 100% chance of explosion at the cost of decreased rate of fire. Um, strangely enough, in Borderlands 2, Torg doesn't make sniper rifles, instead the Cobra became a Jacobs sniper rifle, and unfortunately in Borderlands 2 it is very hard to farm, and it sucks. If you want to play with the Cobra, use it in Borderlands 1. Next up is the Gasher. The Gasher is an SMG by Torg, again another type of weapon that Torg doesn't make in later games. Uh, the Gasher is fires in 3 round bursts, similar to a doll weapon, has decreased accuracy, increased recoil, and actually in, in, at the cost of having an increased fire rate, damage, and clip. Uh, basically, it kind of functions similarly in that regard to a bandit, a bandit SMG. Kind of interesting. Next up is the Redemption, which is a rocket launcher by Torg. Um, it has really high rocket damage, high blast radius, kind of similar to the Nukem, but it has a low rocket velocity that consumes four rockets per shot. Eig. Finally is the Undertaker, which is the only pearlescent weapon by Torg that has really high magazine capacity, damage, and fire rate, at, with as well as a increased blast radius, and it's a pearl weapon. Uh, basically, this is better than the Redemption, if they load. So if you're willing to put in the effort to farm for a Undertaker, it's better than the Redemption. Try to get one. It's kind of cool. This next weapon isn't a uh, isn't a unique weapon, but it's one of my favorites, and that's the Ravager, uh, which is essentially a Torg shotgun with the Torg barrel, doing having a time using four ammo per shot, but having really high projectile count at roughly 16 or more, depending on if you have a vertical grip. The Ravager is massive; da has massive damage, and on any slagged target, the Ravager can one shot or two shot pretty much anything that isn't a raid boss. 
Next up is the Pocket Rocket. The Pocket Rocket can only be obtained from the Torg vending machines in Torg's Campaign of Carnage. Um, it consumes 2 ammo per shot, has increased damage, projectile velocity, magazine size, and explosion radius when compared to other pistols, and for some reason spawns with an assault rifle prefix. For example, uh, double penetrating is actually a normal pistol prefix, but if it doesn't have the double penetrating prefix, it comes with prefixes typically found on assault rifles. Um, basically, if you're willing to spend a little bit more ammo in exchange for faster rockets and bigger magazines and bigger booms, the pocket rocket might be worth your torque tokens. Next up is the Landscaper, a terrible shotgun. Basically, you can't shoot this gun at people. You have to shoot at people's feet, uh, at their feet. It fires grenade projectiles at the cost of shotgun ammo that spreads into a square, oddly enough. These grenades stick to the surface and explode a few seconds later. However, if they come in contact with the enemy, they explode and, well, explode again when the rest of the grenades go off. It's a really, really weird shotgun, and to be honest, if you're going to go down the Zaffird versus Hodug's clan tree, uh, tree, you're better off siding with the Zaffords. At least there, you get a good SMG in the form of the Riestrad, as opposed to siding with the Hodungs that gives you this kind of piece of crap. Next up is the Sword Splosion, which is the only Torg E-Tech weapon. Instead of firing traditional uh, globs of E-Tech energy, like most E-Tech shotguns, the sword explosion fires a single projectile in the shape of a sword that actually has decent range. It explodes on contact, spawning three child, grenades, child grenade swords, kind of similar to a Merv grenade, and does phenomenal damage. If you're playing as Axton, this is one of the best shotguns you can get, and if you're playing as Krieg, this is a really nice shotgun too. Next up is the Evil Smasher. This used to be a really good assault rifle before it got nerfed into oblivion by Gearbox. It has below average overall stats, however, when you, when you reload it, it has a small chance to enhance the power of the next magazine. Essentially, this had the idea of you'd fire one shot and reload, one shot, reload, one shot, reload, in hopes of stacking your reload chances. I've seen many videos in the early time of Borderlands 2, before it was patched, where people could easily stack 10 or more reloads and have a ridiculously powerful assault rifle. Unfortunately, Gearbox nerfed this weapon out of oblivion. It made it kind of suck. The uh, Unfortunately, the reload effect was nerfed, and they took away its stacking potential. So, if you want to have a meh, weapon, go with the Evil Smasher. If not, literally just pick up any blue assault rifle by Torg. It'll probably be better. Unfortunately, another bad assault rifle by Torg is the Boom Puppy, obtained from Tiny Tina at the Car Campaign of Carnage DLC. Uh, it fires bouncing grenades that explode every time it bounces at a high ammo cost. Uh, essentially, this is an assault rifle that instead of shooting bullets or gyro jets, fires rubberized grenades. It's a real pain in the butt to aim and to try to get this thing to hit properly. I would not recommend using it unless you really want to hold on to it just for the cool skin. Next up is a really underrated weapon, and that is the 12-pounder. I've mentioned the 12-pounder before, but it's essentially a Torg rocket launcher that has really high damage at the and a really fast reload speed by comparison to other rocket launchers at the cost of a tiny magazine. Um, most magazines will come with either one or two, however, you can occasionally find one with three or four if you have the right combination of weapons parts. This rocket launcher fires arcing cannonballs that explode directly when hitting an enemy, or if they hit something other than an enemy, like a wall or the floor, they'll bounce before exploding again, and this is the only rocket launcher other than the Kanada's laser that can inflict a critical hit. It's an awesome rocket launcher, though unfortunately it's hard to farm because the Big Sleep is a non-respawning boss. Check it out if you're able to get it. Next up is the Creamer, which is a Moxie brand, uh, or I guess you could say a Moxie modified rocket launcher. Uh, it has a very high velocity, 
and when the rocket explodes a certain distance away from firing, it splits into two rockets. This weapon also heals you for 2% of damage dealt while holding the weapon. This includes weapon, weapon, uh, this includes damage from grenades, from your action skill, and for example, if you fire another weapon and then switch to the creamer before the projectiles hit, you can heal from that too. Pretty nice, but you have to be able to beat the creature slaughter dome in order to get it, which is DLC. Uh, next up is the Midnight Star. Midnight Star is a cursed weapon, which is one of the uh, Captain Blade weapons. It has really, really high damage. However, the child grenades will fly towards you instead of spreading out like a regular Merv grenade. This is essentially the troll grenade. You, <laughs> you basically throw it in hopes of killing things, though you usually 9 times out of 10 will kill yourself instead. Don't even bother with it, this is a piece of crap. The Dead Deadly Bloom is a Torg Nova Shield, and is actually pretty cool. Um, you can also get it in pre-sequel from the Grinder. Uh, most Nova Shields, when the shield is depleted, will release an Elemental Nova. However, the Deadly Bloom will also release a Nova when your health is depleted, making this a really good skill for a character like Krieg or Claptrap if you're willing to put a Deadly Bloom shield on them. Not the best shield, but if you're a fan of Nova Shields and you don't want to use a Flame of the Firehawk, this is actually a pretty fun shield. Next up is the Captain Blade's Manly Man Shield. Once again, another Captain Blade weapon. This adds explosive damage to all of your melee attacks, and the ability stays in effect even when the shield is depleted, but you take bonus damage from elemental sources. Considering how common elemental weapon effects are, especially in UVHM, this is a really difficult shield to even consider being worth it. If you're playing melee, this might be worth using, but you know, you're probably off pretty probably better off using something like the Love Thumper. Next up, Unkempt Herald. I don't even need to tell you how good the Unkempt Herald is. For the cost of 3 ammo per shot, it fires 7 accelerating gyrojet rockets. If you've ever seen a Borderlands 2 player, Chances are they'll probably say the Unkempt Herald is one of the best weapons you can get. In Borderlands the pre-sequel, this was changed to the 88 Fragnum, which functions similarly except instead of having a horizontal spread, has a kind of shotgun spread similar to the Maggie. I've talked about the 88 Fragnum as well, and while it's not as good as the Unkempt, Unkempt Herald, is still a really good gun. Next up is the Flacker. The flacker is kind of interesting because it fires a uh, it fires at the cost of four ammo per shot, very very large spread of exploding rounds. Kind of it's a, it's a really good anti anti aerial gun, good for taking out creatures like rack uh, stalkers to an extent and surveyors. Um, the biggest draw from this gun is. Because the projectiles are slow, if you fire the flacker and then switch to a very high damage rocket launcher like the Nukem or the Torquemada, sorry, not the Torquemada, the Tunguska, it does tons of damage because of a glitch in how the flacker is programmed. Uh, this continues on to the pre sequel, and so if you're looking to do a ton of damage to either something really big or something in the air, the flacker can be pretty good, but if you're using it just to take out humans and robots, you're better off using a better, a different shotgun like the Ravager. The Kerblaster is a cool assault is a cool assault rifle that fires uh, that fires rockets at the cost of four ammo per shot, but each rocket uh, tra travels in a straight trajectory and it releases a grenade that explodes again. Um, Unfortunately, the Kerblaster cannot score critical hits, but can be obtained in both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. It's a really good weapon on Axton, Krieg, and Claptrap, though for other characters, you're probably off better finding a better, a different assault rifle. Next up is the Ogre. The Ogre is personally one of my favorite uh, assault rifles in Borderlands 2, and can be obtained from Warlord Slog in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep. 
This is a pretty cool assault rifle because it adds an extra, it adds on extra splash damage and can fire two shots in rapid succession, similar to other spitter rifles. Um, also, similar to the uh, to the Torg assault rifle I mentioned at the beginning, the, the one that's cr other crap, and I don't even bother. I don't even want to say its name because of how crap it is. When you reload this weapon, it has a chance to randomly increase fire rate and reload speed. And during this buff, the projectiles will ricochet. The Ogre is just a phenomenal assault rifle, though it's kind of sad that it's so hard to farm for, considering how hard it is to get Warlord Slog, even when you're on the badass round of Murderland's Temple. The Nukem is probably one of the best rocket launchers in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel. If you don't have a Nukem or a Kanada's laser, this is probably one of your best bets. It fires rockets in an arc that explodes in a mushroom cloud that has a massive damage radius. Unfortunately, the Nukem also because of that high radius, can knock you down with its high damage, and this gun has low, low reload speed. However, if you want to essentially slag or cryo something, and then take them out in a single rocket, this might be your go-to thing. Also, it's a good reference to the Duke Nukem franchise. Next up is the bonus package, a weapon I actually am a big fan of. It can be obtained early game in Borderlands 2 from Boom and Boom, as well as in the pre-sequel from Torque Badasses or Torque Queens. Um, you can also occasionally find it in the Marcus Munitions item of the day, and I actually that's where I found mine for for my pre-sequel run. It has compared to other uh, Merv grenades really high damage, and when the child grenades explode, they release additional child grenades. If you want to th you can basically just throw a bonus package into a crowded room and watch everyone go down instantly. It's pretty cool. Next up is the Rolling Thunder, which unfortunately makes the bonus package look even better by comparison. The Rolling Thunder is a rubberized grenade, which, if you're familiar with how rubberized grenades work, they're really hard to aim. However, every time the rubberized grenade b bounces, it explodes, kind of similar to the boom puppy. After several bounces, or when contacting an enemy, it explodes like a traditional Merv grenade. This isn't really worth farming for, however, if you're killing Wilhelm during the story, and he happens to drop one, pick it up, it might be worth using for a level or two. Next up is the Devastator. The Devastator is a pistol that is a Seraph rarity that can be obtained from either the vendor in Oasis, from Hyperius, or from Master Yi. Uh, this weapon has increased damage in a two-round burst, however it has decreased bullet velocity. Um, strangely enough, there's a glitch with this weapon that actually has projectiles fire from behind the shooter. It looks really weird, but also kind of cool. Um, also, for some reason, the Devastator has a white rarity skin, despite being a Seraph weapon. Go figure. Next up is the Ahab. The Ahab and the Error Message are Seraph rocket launchers obtained uh, obtained in the Vendor of Oasis or Master Gi. Uh, kind of similar to the idea of the 12-pounder, the Ahab and the Error Message fire harpoon-shaped projectiles that stick into targets and a few seconds later will explode. Uh, the projectile has a steep downward curve, but has very high damage, decreased reload speed and capacity, and a very small blast radius. It's not the best, but if you want to be able to one-shot a single target with a rocket in a worse fact function than a Conada's laser, you might want to try to farm for it, though again, it's up to you. Next up is the Seeker, a Seraph assault rifle obtained from Flame Rock Refuge. Um, strangely enough, the shots home in on enemies, though each shot consumes two ammo. Uh, by comparison to other Torg assault rifles, the Seeker has highest accuracy, high damage, but a low fire rate. It's alright, but again, I like the Ogre better. The Meteor Storm is a Seraph grenade obtained from the Badass Crater of Badassitude. I could tell you what it does, though basically it's the bonus package, but better. 
Next up is the boom, Big Boom Blaster, a Seraph Booster Shield obtained from the Badass Crater of Badassitude or from Pyro Pete. Uh, strangely enough, the despite being a Torg Shield, it's glitched to look like a to have the skin of a Doll Shield. Um, each booster, if you're familiar with how booster shields work, when your shield takes damage, it has a chance to drop a booster. Each booster shield uh, drops uh, not only restore shields like most booster shields, but the Big Boom Blaster will restore one grenade ammo and one rocket ammo. If you're using a lot of rockets, the Big Boom Blaster is pretty cool. Though you might, if you're not using grenades and rockets, you're probably better off looking for a different shield. Next up is the Tunguska. The Tunguska is essentially the Nukem, except it is more damage. It does oh, significantly more damage, has slower reload, and has a better a better chance to kill you. Don't farm for it, though. If you do want to farm for it, you can get it from loot midgets or OMG. What the fuck? Excuse me, OMG WTF? Pardon my language. And is a pearlescent rocket launcher. Next up is the Carnage, which is a pearlescent shotgun obtained from Tubby Enemies. It has massively increased damage at a very reduced projectile count. As you noticed before, the Ravager, without the vertical grip, said it had a 16 projectiles, and this doesn't seem to, to, to say it has projectiles, and this is because it instead resembles torpedo rockets. That's right, it's basically a rocket launcher in shotgun form. But these rockets have high velocity and a big area of effect. Essentially, if you want to have a rocket launcher that, instead of having a bazooka shape, that fires instead from a shotgun shape, go for the carnage. It might be difficult to farm for, but it's kind of a fun gun to use. I've already covered the Nukem, however, there is one Torg explosive laser that I want to mention. And if I can't find it, that's okay. Oh, there it is. The Laser Disker! <laughs> the Laser Disker, I actually, I consider to be Torg, however, I should have brought it up in my TDR video. The laser disker is always an explosive element laser that fires a blue disc in a straight trajectory that explodes on contact with walls or enemies. It has very high damage, but a very low rate of fire, and damage is more than doubled when the target is either mid-air, in mid-air, or frozen solid. I forgot to include it in my TDR video, however, that's because I thought it was a Torg weapon. So, I'm sorry that I forgot to include it in my TDR video. The Laser Disker is amazing, especially on Claptrap or Wilhelm. Get the Laser Disker if you can, though if you can't farm it from Shadow Trap, you might want to use a, a, some, something like Gibbed Save Editor, uh, Border Tool, or something like that. Next up is the Moonscaper. If you remember me talking about the Landscaper earlier in this video, the Moonscaper is essentially the same thing, except instead of shooting four projectiles, it shoots five. Other than that, the Moonscaper is essentially the same. It's kind of a crappy gun. Don't even bother picking it up. Just, just, I mean, like, don't even bother using it. Just, like, pick it up and sell it right away. A related weapon to the Moonscaper and Landscaper, however, is the Torg Mata. This can be obtained really early game from the Torgo Torgo mission, which basically you means you can get an amazing shotgun early game. You can get this mission almost as soon as you're able to get to Concordia. Uh, to yeah, to Concordia. Uh, similar to the Landscaper and the Moonscaper, the Tor the Torgmata fires explosive projectiles that basically just stick into the ground on impact. However, these explode multiple times and have a decreased delay. That meaning, essentially, as soon as you shoot these projectiles, they'll either explode multiple times right when hitting an enemy, or they'll explode around the enemy if the projectiles miss. Uh, this is actually pretty nice, because if there's a number of characters in one area, or characters that kind of move around a lot, like Psychos or Torgs, you can essentially fire the Torque Mata in their general direction. If you hit one, if you hit them with one of the projectiles, it ex it'll explode multiple times, dealing damage again multiple times. However, if you miss, the small explosions from the projectiles, basically stuck into the ground or walls or whatever, 
can have a chance of splashing, dealing more damage there. The reason why the Torgmata is better than the Landscaper or the Moonscaper is because the Torgmata doesn't have to wait a long period of time before these grenades go off. The grenades go off almost instantaneously, and unlike the Moonscaper and the Landscaper, the Torgmata has multiple explosions per projectile rather than just one. So anyway, those were all the Torg weapons from Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel. Was there one I missed out, or do you have a favorite Torg weapon that you want me to talk about in further detail? Let me know in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next time when I go over one of my least favorite wep uh, weapon manufacturers, but is probably one of the ones you know best. And that's Bandit and Scav. See you next time.